these, depends on what species it was. Uh, those are pupa. Here's one in a bud cocoon. Uh, all of these are going to turn into big moths or butterflies of some type. That one there turned into that moth. And uh, it's called a hummingbird moth. She's active late in the evening when, and is fluttering around deep-throated flowers. You always see it around real deep-throated flowers. And you'll, it's the size of a hummingbird. And it says it's getting dark and most people, yeah, it's a hummingbird out there. Well, take a good look and it may be her. And I took a toothpick and I unrolled his proboscis or a tongue, whatever you want to call it. It was six inches long. So she's flying around and unrolling that thing and going way down in deep-throated flowers and sucking nectar. And then she goes to the next flower, the next little flower. What she's doing, she's cross-pollinating, see? And that's necessary in nature to keep the plant health strong. So she's beneficial. So leave her eat at least a little bit of your tomato plant. <laughs> All right, there's another big horn worm. Uh, one morning, I worked nights on the railroad. The sun was up nice and yellow, and I was looking over my tomato patch about as big as this room. And one plant way over in the corner was wiggling like this. I said, my gosh, must be a gopher over or something. I went over and it was that big hornworm on a limb and that fly was pestering it. Every time that fly got ready to land on it, that hornworm would kick up a storm. But well, sooner or later that, horn, that fly did lab, land on that hornworm and deposit white eggs. Draconic. I don't know how to spell it. Look in the book. <laughs> oh, you want me to tell you how to spell it? All right. Okay. Let me spell it. B R A C O N I D. Thank you. Drop <laughs> something. Anyway, that fly does the same thing that those little aphids do. She lays eggs on that worm. The egg will bore into it, uh, the worm will hatch, and then it will pupate, and then a fly eventually will emerge from it. And then that worm never gets to reproduce, see. All right, there's a walnut caterpillar. And we have about 16 big pecan trees around the house when they moved on that new farm. And these things got real bad. I mean, they were everywhere. They were calling on the barbed wire, the fence post up and down the... the tree trunks and everything, and I went in the house and I called Dr. Durers and I described and he said, oh yeah. He said, you better get some poison out there, Malcolm. They're going to do some damage. Well, I didn't want to use poison. I already had one bad. Anyway, I didn't, said, let them eat a few leaves. You can look up there in the, the trees, the leaves had holes in them. looked like somebody had been shooting a shotgun through them. <coughs> well, I was working on an old truck and I had it jacked up real high. And a fly kept buzzing around there on the ground. <coughs> And I happened to look down, and it was a fly. Landed on that larva and deposited a white egg, flew off, made a couple circles, <clears throat> came and landed again, deposited another egg. Then I start looking around. Of all those thousands of uh, walnut caterpillars, all of them had from two to a dozen eggs on them. Every one of them had a fly, had caught up with I went in the house and I called Dr. Dewar. I said, there will not be any walnut caterpillars next year. He said, what makes you so sure? I said, there's a natural enemy caught up and it's parasitized every one of them. And that was way back. And I have not seen the walnut caterpillar since. My daddy used to tell me they call them army worms. You know, they move in big armies. And they would come and get real bad and then go and you wouldn't see them again for years. And that's because their natural enemy caught up with them and killed them all in the larva stage. None of them ever went to the adult stage to deposit eggs. There's that fly right there. Very beneficial. Are there any nurses in here or doctors that are familiar with uh, maggot therapy? Y'all know what that is. Somebody, you want to describe it? Dead skin, dead in other words, if you got an infection that they can't cure, they'll put fly larvae in there and let them eat it out. They eat it out, they eat up all the infection, and then they even secrete something to make it heal faster. 
But they usually don't tell you they put fly larvae in there, do they? <laughs> when we first started in the compost business, bringing manure on a place, uh, a lot of flies came with them. And I didn't want to use poison, but I figured I had to, so I got some big round pans and I put some golden merlin fly bait. You know, I didn't want it to get out anywhere else. So, huh, that didn't hardly do anything. Well, I was uh, looking through a magazine one day. I don't know if I got that picture or not. No. We're looking through the organic magazine one day and it showed a picture of uh, a fly. Uh, uh, a little bitty wasp attacking a fly larva. That's the way it was. And uh, it was an ad that you could buy fly parasites. So I ordered a whole bunch of these parasites and I put them all around our compost operation and everything. And the fly population went down maybe 40%, maybe 50%. Then I read the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> and it said take the fly parasite to the locations where they're breeding. Well, you see, we were bringing the manure in from the stables and the dairies and the racetrack and places, and we were bringing fly larvae in, and they hatched in the flies. So then I start taking the fly parasites to the polo stables and the dairies and places where we get the manure, and bingo, our fly population just disappeared. Disappeared. Uh, I found out I was composting over the Edwards Recharge Zone. So I said, hmm, I better find out about this. So I called the Edwards Underground Water Authority and I told them to come out and make sure I'm not getting in trouble. So they sent a lady out. And I said, well, let's get my pickup. I'll show you around. She said, no, we're going to walk. I said, all right. Well, we're walking all through the compost yards, all the compost piles and everything. All of a sudden, she looked at me and she said, what are you doing for fly control? I says, I use fly parasites. She said, you don't use poison? I says, oh, no, I can't do that because I sell my stuff to organic gardeners. Then she said, well, what you're doing here has been running in our aquifer since day one. That's not a problem. They weren't worried about manure because animals have been manuring all over the aquifer everywhere. <laughs> it's natural. Nature takes care of it. She said, but if you use poison and that got into our aquifer, she said, then we would have some problems. What would we do? So nature takes care of itself. They work. Oh, they work beautiful. These are fly pupa that these wasps, these are these uh, fly parasites, wasps hatched out of. And we got people using them everywhere. They work. All right, that's a praying mammoth, normally called a devil horse or whatever you want to call it. When I was a kid, they called him a devil horse. I always wanted a horse, and I caught a great big one and tied a string on it, and I led my horse around. <laughs> Very beneficial. It's the only insect that can turn his head side to side like a human does. Very beneficial. There you're looking at one eyeball to eyeball. <laughs> they won't hurt you. That was a long one, about four or five inches long. I know what that is. Right. Yeah, but you seem to pre read my book. I've been seeing those since I was a kid, too. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I, uh,. A lot of people don't know what they are. That's the problem. <clears throat> one of my friends was an organic gardener from way back, and I was over his house one day, and he was taking me back to show, his, show me his garden, and we passed his peach tree. He saw one of them in the peach tree, and he broke the limb off and threw it on the ground and stomped on it, and he was an organic gardener. I said, Gene, you know what you did? Yeah, I killed an ass. He said, no, that's a praying mantis egg case. Now, they look like an ass when they're first deposited because they will have an orange or a white hair all over them. If you're not sure, take a stick and touch it. An ass will look like that, have a beautiful hairdo. And they come all colors, brown, black, brunettes, whiteheads. <laughs> and they're beautiful to play with. You would think you know make a nice pet, but you rub those. They've got some hollow spines under that hair, and if you rub that on you, and they inject that poison, it hurts. It hurts for hours. I was out picking uh, figs one day, and somehow one of them got stuck right here on my shirt, and I didn't see it. 
white suburb my wife didn't see this little bitty one and I went and sat down in front of TV to watch the news and I was reading a paper and somehow I rubbed my wrist over that ass and it started hurting it hurt it hurts I was up all night my joints hurt my elbow hurt everywhere I never heard of any of them, one of them killing anybody but they hurt tell the difference and I